All right, so we just got back from Everest. I'm back in Kathmandu in a hotel, and this video is gonna be a bit of a little chat. Although, there's gonna be some takeaways for you. Something really valuable that I learned, let's say, eight months ago, from a colleague of mine, Jesse Itzler. Great guy, um, has taught me a lot. I love his mentality, and he has this amazing test, this happiness test, that I want you guys to try right now. This is how it works. All right, so I want you to take everything in your life, all right? Imagine your relationships, your health, your parents, your work, where you live, all these little details, everything in your life, and just put it in a blender, mix it all up, and you've got this bucket of stuff, life, right? And what I want you to do is to give it a score from one to 10 and be as honest with yourself as possible, okay? This doesn't work unless you do that. And when you do that, think of 10 as the best, right? Your perfect happiness, the Dalai Lama, right? Where one is lower than rock bottom. Now be as honest with yourself, take a moment and just give yourself a score. Now I can't do a poll here, but what tends to happen is most people will think about a seven, right? Obviously there's gonna be people a little higher, think they're happier, but a lot of people are gonna be maybe lower, um, but a seven or less is probably what most people will have. What did you score? For me, I was around a seven, seven and a half. It can fluctuate, but I'd say I'm around there. Now, me showing you what your score is of how happy you are, that's not that interesting. I think what is the most interesting is what happens in your brain when you do that little self-assessment. This is what happens. When I tell you to think about where you are, what your number is, you immediately go to a 10. We all do, if not most of us. And what will happen is, okay, then you start to say, well, I'd be a 10, but then this part of my life isn't so great. So maybe take a point off or half point off. And then this thing could be better. So maybe take another point off. And then you settle somewhere, right? And for me, I settled around a seven, right? So that means that there are some things preventing me from having a 10. Now, what to take away from this test is, is what you immediately thought was impacting your happiness score, those are the things you need to work on, right? Those are the things that are preventing you, supposedly, from being happy. This doesn't sound so crazy, but when you put it in that perspective, you say, well, yeah, maybe those things aren't so great. And if I have so many years left of my life, you know, I'm 37, I'm walking around with a seven, right? A C, that's a C minus, barely better than a D in happiness in my life. Like what else am I doing in my life if I'm not trying to be happy? And I'm just walking day to day, happy with a C minus? No, that, that, that doesn't feel right, right? Like. Maybe in other things, you know, fitness, maybe I can deal with a C. Uh, maybe money is, could be a C, right? But happiness in my life, like there's nothing more important. Why is that not an eight, at least? Why is that not a nine? How can I make it a 10? So what's powerful about this exercise is that the things that detracted from your score, those are the immediate things that you need to work on to boost your score. And so for me, when I did this test a number of months back, I realized it was mountains. I'm missing mountains in my life. That's a big detractor for me. I live in Miami. I grew up here, but I hate the beach. I hate water sports. I hate going to the beach. I hate the constant heat. So why am I here? I love the mountains. I love snow. I love being able to go outside in the wilderness and, and, and go up, you know, on rock, on snow, on glacier. Why is that not part of my life? If that's the only thing that's limiting me or one of the things that's limiting me from my happiness score being at least an eight or a nine, that's a simple thing to change. I move or I find a way to be closer to the mountains. Which leads me to my next point, the importance of sticking to things. Things that will lend itself to your happiness ultimately, right? So 
When we think about happiness, right, there's things you can do immediately and be happy. And that feels good. It satiates ourselves, we feel happy in the moment, but a lot of times that doesn't last, right? So when we're talking about happiness, right, it's really a, a long-term thing here. We want to be happy feeling, thinking back on our whole life, right? Not just instance, it's gotta be over the span of our lives or over the span of the last decade or something. You wanna feel overall content and happy with what you've done and where you're headed and where you're at. So it's tempting to think that to, to make yourself happy, just do more of the things that make you immediately happy. But that's not always the case, right? Happiness, I think, comes from obviously doing things that make you happy over the long term, but also doing things that aren't so immediately gratifying, things for the long term. And it's kind of like that type two fun, you know, when you do something that's fun in the moment, cool, that's fun. But it's not like this lasting feeling of fun. But when you do something that's type two fun, it's kind of miserable, challenging when you do it, but afterwards you look back on it and you're like, that was fun. I wanna do that again, I'm happy that I did that. That made me very satisfied on the fun meter or the happiness meter. So happiness, I think, is the same way. It's sticking to things that make you happy for the long term. I know that, that doesn't sound very revolutionary, but um, it's true. And I think about, I've had a lot of time to reflect on my climbing here. You know, I've tried Everest four times, I haven't summited. And while that's disappointing, uh, in some sense, because I've always wanted to stand on top of the world, you know, I've, I've come to realizations over the last four expeditions that it's more about the journey, right? That's really what I'm after. Yet, I come back aiming to get to the summit. Well, that's part of it. I guess I also enjoy the trip too. I want to re-experience that and have that happiness in my life. But what I realize is, is I'm very happy and proud of the fact that I've stuck to this goal and this dream of mine for the last 10 plus years. And while that's a long time to have to train and to think about the money that goes into Everest, finding sponsors and putting myself through the whole process of climbing Everest, which is super demanding. I lost 30 pounds and you know my family's at home and uh, it's difficult, but I'm very happy in terms of the story of my life with what I've done with it. And that comes from having stuck to something that I know makes me happy for a long time. And I think that's really important, the importance of sticking to things, right? In relation to how that makes you happy. Being able to target, you know, the simple things that you need that help you make your, your score higher to make you happy and trying to incorporate that in your life somewhat consistently. Um, obviously I can't climb Everest all the time, but it's not more really about that. It's, it's about the mountains and having some sense of challenge for, having had that for the last 10 years where you know while I want more mountains in my life I do feel that I'm leading a, 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 a version of my life that is lending itself to happiness for me if that makes sense so what am I what am I getting down to well one do the happiness test figure out what your score is figure out the things detracting from your score. Work on those things. Those are the things you now know that you need to work on to maximize your score and be happier. And I think that last little step is to take those things and if you can't have it every day, at least try to incorporate it on some consistent basis for a long period of time. Now, obviously setting long goals and sticking to things for a long time is hard, but if it's something that you know will make you happy, I don't think it's that hard to incorporate it uh, for the long term. You just gotta realize what it is and act on it. I think that's my point here. So, just a bit of rambling, some thoughts. I'll have more thoughts on my Everest climb, some more videos coming up about it, but I just wanted to share that little happiness test with you. Um, for those of you struggling out there or kind of unsure where you are in life, maybe this will help you uh, get on track just a little bit. And. Uh, Thank you guys so much for listening to me. I'll be back home very soon. Please like and subscribe, share, and uh, looking forward to the rest of this year with you guys. And who knows, maybe I'll leave Florida and move to the mountains sooner than you think. I'm out.